So you want to know what it costs to build a burnout truck? Today you're going to find out. So I've been asked quite a few times what it costs to build Bernie, what it took. A lot of people don't think it had much money into it. There is a bit more even than what I thought when I put it down. And I made a whole list, added it all up, and I'm going to share that with you guys here soon. Uh, but we're going to go over everything here. But this doesn't only work for burnout vehicles. This would work for pretty much any LS swap. I mean, there's definitely some places that you can save some money or spend a whole lot more. But this kind of gives you the basic breakdown if you're looking at LS swapping something. Give you an idea of what it takes. So I ended up picking up Bernie off of Facebook Marketplace for 350 bucks. It was just a roller. The whole front end was missing off this thing. It was sitting in the bed of the truck. But I ended up getting a roller with a title clear for 350 bucks. So really couldn't beat that. That same night, we drove over and picked up this LS engine, another Facebook Marketplace find. Paid $675 for it uh, with mid-100,000 miles on it. I'm not really sure. Don't quite remember if it's like 140 or 160 or something like that. But uh, it was a pullout out of a truck. So went ahead and picked it up. You can find these things, you know, anywhere from probably $400 to $1,200, depending on where you're at and what you're doing. So that is kind of gives you a base idea of what just the base engine costs. That was a stock pullout. Uh, and then as you can see, we've added a whole bunch of stuff to it. So pretty much any stock LS build I do, I keep it pretty simple. I pull it apart, clean it, put an oil pump in it, put head gaskets in it and head studs in it. So then everything's pretty good. Even if you end up boosting it or whatever, put some good MLS head gaskets in it, keep everything pretty fresh. That's a good time to go through. You can look at everything and make sure everything looks pretty good. So, you know, oil pumps, 250 bucks. I think head gaskets are somewhere around like 90 bucks, 70 or nine, 70 to 90, somewhere in there. Uh, it depends on which ones you want to go for. Then on the cam kit, I went ahead and did a Texas speed cam kit. Came out just under a thousand dollars. That was, I went ahead and kept LS7 lifters, put fresh lifters because LSs are known for lifter issues. Did a cam and some good push rods and valve springs. So the whole top end part of that was nice and fresh because I was going to be revving this thing to 7,500 and beating it off the limiter. On the outside of the engine, you can see there is a few things and not all of the stuff you have to do, but I went ahead and put like a nice motion steam vent kit on it. I did also put a billet valley cover just to keep it nice. The Holly intake, which is a split runner. I want to do a dual throttle body style, but they didn't have any. So I went ahead with this and it's worked out really well. The Wilson manifold. So this one's kind of funny. So that thing is twice as expensive as what I paid for the whole truck to begin with. You can definitely find cheaper throttle bodies, but it is what makes the truck work. There's no issues. Like some of the cheaper ones, they talk about bolts falling out of them and all sorts of stuff. This is a big factor when tuning everything. So I wanted a very nice throttle body that worked every time that was consistent, that had good sensors. It just, it was nice. The Holly split intake is right around $430, I believe. So there's definitely a few things here on the engine that you could run a stock intake and you could keep the stock throttle body. Uh, but on this one, being a burnout truck, I wanted to put some tall high runner stuff. My pretty much did it all to be able to put a big air cleaner out the hood so then it would look crazy during burnout competitions. The next part on this was building some big headers. I wanted this thing loud and crazy. So we picked up a bunch of mandrel bins and some header flanges and went to work. My dad came over and helped me knock these out. And man, they've been cool. They sound awesome. And it definitely takes the truck to the next level. So a lot of things on the burnout truck is not necessary, but I did it so it has more of a wow factor. If you're just getting into it, want to build something similar, just do an LS swap. Keep a lot of things simple. I even suggest it on a lot of people just to get the project up and running and have fun with it and then upgrade your stuff later. So many people get stuck in the garage for years and years and never get something completed. So then they never have fun with it. They lose interest, sell it, don't ever get to enjoy it. And a lot of money spent and uh, kind of wasted at that point because they never even got to enjoy it. Ooh, those tires are annihilated <laughs> so this thing definitely does its job with killing some tires the next thing i'll talk about is the fuel system here this is super easy definitely a spot you could save some money if you wanted to but the stealth 340 this whole combo right here other than the lines comes complete from aeromotive it's a two-wire hookup it's already got the fuel pump in the tank vent everything just super simple super easy i went with the little tank because on burnouts you don't want a ton of 
fuel sloshing around. So I went with that little tank. So then doing burnouts and if anything catastrophic happens, something hits or, you know, cracks a tank or whatever, you just don't dump 20 gallons of fuel out. Six gallons could be bad enough. You definitely don't want 20 gallons out there. And if you have a big tank and you only put five gallons in it and then you're doing burnouts and everything else, you could run into sloshing issues and not picking up fuel. So that is why I went with the little tank on this one. And it just, it's worked out great. I mean, this thing is purpose built to do burnouts and I didn't need a ton of fuel. Although we might have to drive it around a little bit. I'll just have to carry some spare fuel with me at some point. The fuel lines do come up. The lines came with the intake and then you always forget how much money you end up spending on fuel lines, hose and fittings, uh, regulator, stuff like that. That stuff all adds up. So pretty much the whole fuel system with that tank lines, fittings and all that comes out to right around a thousand dollars. Even this canon air filter cost about a hundred bucks but i think it was well worth it just for the wow factor underneath the truck you really can't quite see it but there is a power glide so it has a trans brake it's actually the spare one out of salty you can find these right around a thousand dollars drive shaft loop those things add up you know 25 30 bucks i think maybe 50 depending on which one you get and then custom drive shaft that was 400 bucks so it adds up just like you don't think about needing a drive shaft till you need one so the reason Bernie has a power glide is, well, thanks to all the Australians. That is what they use. I've watched a lot of videos, talked to some of them, and that's what they use in all of their vehicles is power glides. Some of them might have turbo 400s in them, two or three speeds, but pretty much Bernie keeps it real simple. You uh, start your burnout, click it into high gear, and that's where it stays for the entire burnout is in high gear until the tires pops. Keeps it real simple. A few people have asked me about, you know, clutches and doing a stick uh, manual, but you have to shift it so many times, I think, and this just keeps it really easy. And that brings up another good point. If you're thinking about building one of these burnout vehicles, a lot of people have just extra stuff laying around. An extra transmission, an extra engine, an extra car sitting outside. So it's really cool. You can just grab that stuff, throw it together, and go try this. I mean, it's so new over here in the States. It's growing pretty well with, uh, you know, people like Cletus behind it and the Hoonigans with their burn yard. The Freedom Factory is going to be huge here in the future when everything's open and we can go do massive burnouts there. Uh, even a place here in Colorado has a big burnout pad and the local drag strips have been doing them on like Tuesday nights, letting people go out and do burnouts in the staging lanes that kind of mark off a little area. So I see a lot of the burnout stuff growing, which is super awesome. That is part of the reason why I built Bernie. Actually, that's the whole reason I built Bernie is I see it being a whole new sport. So I said, well, why not throw something together? Although this one got a little out of hand from what I originally expected to do. The cheapest mod of the whole build was welding up the diff, and man, has it lasted pretty well. They say don't launch them, but for burnouts, this thing is holding together pretty well. Also, deleting the rear brakes. So that's one of the uh, key things to do in a burnout vehicle, so you don't catch your brakes on fire, you just cap it off, and you just run with your fronts, but make sure you got some good front brakes. So as you can see on this truck, it looks like a $350 truck when you look inside. I mean, that door panel's pretty messed up. The seat's definitely messed up. No door panel on that side. Uh, but the truck came all complete, which was decent. The steering column was a mess in the other truck. Plus, I wanted to be able to control some stuff uh, with like either a trans brake, a two-step button. That was kind of my original idea. Now it's the second stage of nitrous. But I ended up putting a bolt-in column for motion in here. I mean, this whole deal is like $680, bucks, but the old stock one was uh, super wobbly, moved all around and everything. So I definitely wanted something to have decent control over the truck in a burnout. The shifter was a leftover shifter. I don't even have a shifter ball for this thing. So that was pretty much free. You could say that would be like 200 bucks if you had to go buy one. A lot of people have some of these. I did have to buy like a new cable and stuff like that. And then in here is the Holly Terminator X. So you can buy these EFI systems for right around $1,000. That's what I wired the whole truck with. That's also what this little dash is here. Uh, I need to get a little dash mount for it. But pretty much this thing, bang for the buck for $1,000. You really can't beat it if you're LS swapping something, especially if you want to be able to have some add-on features, kind of like the nitrous controller and stuff like that. Uh, stock ECU would work. You could probably save a few dollars but a lot of people that will build LS swaps and hit me up and they're like, what do you think? For, and they start going towards a like stock ECU. I mean, a swap harness, unless you rework your own, which you can save some money there. But if you buy a swap harness, if you're not a big wiring person, it's probably like 680 bucks. 
then you got to get HP tuners to tune it, or you got to pay somebody else to tune it. I mean, and you, you have to possibly pay somebody else to tune it. Holly, depending on where you're at, but uh, Holly is a lot easier to use, a lot more user friendly, and they come with some base tune, especially if you're doing like an NA deal, it's good to get you up and running. To me, it's a wash, and if you're starting from scratch, it's way easier to start with a Holly. Plus, like I said, you get the nitrous controller. If it's a turbo vehicle, you get the turbo. Uh, you get the boost controller and all of that type of stuff. So it's definitely, to me, is a much better bang for the buck. There's definitely a few plans in the future. I want to get some decent door panels on this thing. A good seat, maybe even a race seat. Definitely, either way, put a bar back here or mount some harnesses up over the seat to put some more safety in this thing. Right now, I'm just using the lap belt. I move around a little bit during the burnouts, uh, so it'll be nice to put some nice belts in the truck. A lot safer as well. I ended up running one of these the rail, the rally, the rails, whatever you want to call it, uh, transmission coolers. I'm not sure how the correct pronunciation on it, uh, but these things work great. I actually have one on Clyde and on Salty, and these little trans coolers work awesome. Bed mounted it, kept it nice and simple uh, and good in the fresh air instead of being under the truck with all of the tire smoke that would be coming off of those. I think these things are right around like 330 bucks with the whole kit, which includes some lines, fitting, everything that you pretty much need to install it. Uh, so really can't beat it. So on this build, since it is a burnout specific vehicle and that's all I need it for, I went ahead and hooked up the radiator fans and the rear transmission fan all off the same trigger. So at like 160 degrees, all the fans come on, they run all the time. We need all the cooling because this thing will start out in a burnout, you know, it'll roll into a pit at 160 and by the end of it, it's like 220, 225, but we've had, you know, five or six of those solid burnouts like that. And it's gotten pretty warm. Uh, but it seems fine. Oil pressure seems great. So this thing has taken quite a beating. I mean, in overall, like runtime, it's not crazy, but while it's running, it is getting the death beat out of this thing. Another part of a build that most people will kind of forget about is the cost for like radiator fans. Uh, you, this one needed a different radiator, depending on what chassis you run. This is like a Corvette radiator. I just bought like a cheap eBay one to try it. It's worked fine. So, I mean, between, I think the radiator and radiator fans, you're probably talking another like 300 bucks. I think it's like 150 ish for that. And like each fans, like, I don't know, 50 to 70 bucks. I think I want some decent fans on this one. Cause uh, I wanted good cooling. So that's kind of just an important thing on this is to like, hopefully help it cool as much as possible. As you guys can see, I ran the stock water pump, stock alternator, all that stuff that came with the engine. I ended up just reusing. I did get rid of the power steering pump cause it wouldn't fit anyway and i wanted to keep it simple and i just left the stock rack in here for the s10 and i just looped it over uh it turns okay i mean it does burnouts pretty well so it really isn't too bad as i'm looking down and talking about the steering i realize that there's other parts that i never even put on my full list that i built out to show you guys at the end of this video <laughs> uh motor plates like the motor mount adapters completely forgot about that and the engine swap pan, I ran a Holly swap pan to help clear the K-member on this, slide it back, and it clears without notching this K-member. And the uh, S10 transmission cross-member. So already looking at this, I'm like, oh yeah, there's that and that. So it starts adding up. There's lots of little things you always kind of forget about. Again, you can build some of that stuff yourself or do it cheaper. You might have some stuff laying around or off of another project, but cars, right? Also, don't forget about wiring. Like your power cables and ground cables are not cheap. Uh, that stuff definitely adds up. This is a good battery, but we had this one laying around. I went ahead and reused this, so I saved some money there. Uh, a lot of people have another battery laying around, so definitely use that if you can. Battery, all your wiring, the heavy gauge wires to run back and forth, some terminals, relays, because I built a whole like wiring relay board. If you haven't seen that video, go back and check out how I wired the whole truck. It's all been documented. On Bernie, I wanted to run some E85, so I went ahead and ran Siemens Deca 80s. These are an extremely popular ls swap injector they're great for like up to 700 horsepower if you're building like an e85 turbo combo so i went ahead and ran those if you ever upgrade or whatever they're easy to sell and upgrade from there another little thing that you never think about is like this little plate here for the throttle body uh and things like that the converter in this truck i picked up from a buddy for like 350 bucks just a used one that he wasn't using there's a ton of ls converters out there small block chevy probably small block Ford. there are tons of converters so if you're building something to throw together and go try it i suggest just picking up a used converter although i might be getting a spec converter for this thing hopefully in the future because i think it will take this even to the next level 
the first time we took Bernie out and I did some big burnouts, I wouldn't go into high gear and hold it. It would lug down around 3,600 and not really do a good high gear burnout unless it was standing still. I needed a little extra power in this unit. So what did we do? I ended up hitting up NX and got a nitrous kit for this thing. It actually is pretty sweet, a dual stage setup. I thought I could do both with the Terminator X, but you can only do a single stage. So right now it's got a hundred shot here and then another 50 on the button if needed. So just in case, if I ever need it, I can go ahead and grab it. But I mean, it did excellent just even on the hundred shot. And I have a whole bag of jets if we ever need to turn it up. That also brings up, if you wanna build something cool like this, it doesn't just have to be specific to burnouts. You could throw some good tires on this thing, go drag race. You probably knock the rear end out of it, uh, but you could have some fun. I wanna try it, see what this thing will run in the quarter mile, just to see. I mean, it's kind of cool, light S10 with an LS on nitrous. It's just something a little bit different and it'll be fun to make a video about that. But also you guys could build something that's meant for drag racing or burnouts and then vice versa and make it to other events. Will it be super competitive in one class or another? Possibly not, but if you find the right class, it might be. So just keep that in mind. If you're building something, you can build it multi-purpose, which would be awesome. Like with everything, Bernie is, I'm sure, just at the beginning stages and things will get even crazier over the next few years. If there's more burnout comps that pop up, crazier cars getting built, higher caliber stuff. I'm sure that they all have to build something to go along with it. But for right now, Bernie is killing it. This thing has been just awesome to do burnouts in. Just a blast. I mean, nothing I've built ever before is meant to literally just go out full throttle, beat on it. And if something breaks, it breaks. Don't care. Hit a wall. I mean, I did a freaking wall tap. So if you guys see that over here, I mean, <laughs> the tire blew up once it crunkled it a little bit and then i ended up doing a wall tap it bent it in even more uh that was part of the reason for doing a truck if i ever want to replace the beds i can without replacing the whole vehicle uh so if it gets beat up back there so i know a lot of the australians watch this and you guys say the wall taps you know uh at our events wall taps aren't necessarily a bad thing it's kind of for the show to put it for the crowd uh, I see in the future probably as the higher caliber cars come out that that will kind of go away. It wasn't necessarily a have to do, but you kind of do it for the crowd. So we'll see what the future brings with doing some of those things in the burnout comps here in the U.S. So now for the grand total of what it costs to build Bernie the burnout truck. Uh, somewhere around $11,350 into this thing, which seems crazy for just going out and doing burnouts. But this is a blast if it becomes a new sport. We all thought drifting was, you know, just a fad. People sliding around cars in a parking lot at one point in time. And now there is a ton of pro drifters. I hope, I can't wait to hopefully see one day there being pro burnout drivers in the u.s it'd be it'd be incredible that'd be something insane to see uh but it could happen right so otherwise i'm having a blast doing it it cost about 100 bucks in tires every time i go out just buy some cheap ones from walmart uh so every time you kill some tires it's, it's a little pricey but uh usually you only go to an event you pop like one set so it's not it's not insane uh so there it is guys if you're looking at building something ls base if you have any questions drop them in the comments below give me your thoughts do you think that's crazy do you think that's not bad for what it is i mean it was a 350 dollar truck and in like four months it became what it is more or less uh which the whole build series is up on the channel if you guys haven't watched that i know a bunch of you have popped in here from the uh you know the cletus and cars video and the freedom factory video i appreciate it thank you guys so much for liking it uh subscribing following along i hope you guys enjoy this content I figured i'd give you guys a little background if you hadn't seen the build and kind of what it takes so hopefully you can build something like this in the future so i know we're all gearheads if you're watching this thing and you've made it this far you're, you're probably thinking about doing something similar in the future uh, just don't, don't copy me. All right. <laughs> oh, and then another thing that I forgot about was the paint job, which thanks to Trevor over at Motion Auto TV, we painted this thing for about a hundred bucks in materials. He had the gun, he had some of the other stuff. So we just DA'd it real quick. So some sandpaper and some cheap paint from the parts store. Uh, and we had a paint job. So, I mean, that was some elbow grease, but it cost about a hundred bucks. So that's $11,450-ish, so we got to stop this video because it just keeps going up and I'm not even working on the dang thing. So if you guys want to see more, you know what to do. See you guys next time.